So how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm really excited to talk about animals with you. Yeah, I know. So I'll start with some fun questions for you. We're going to make a little Hogwartsy. So Uh the Tego Foundation, we're about (laughs) animals in the wizarding world and the muggle Mm -hmm. world. So so we know you're a proud Gryffindor. Oh, yes. do Do you know what your Patronus is and what your wand is? I don't know what I, I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, like, I know I did it like years and years and years ago <laughs> and I forgot my log on information. <laughs> and so I haven't been able to go on and, and figure it out. So I don't know what I am. Um, if I had to guess a Patronus, it'd be a unicorn all the way. Oh, um, that. Absolutely. My spirit animal. Um, but otherwise I don't know what my wand is. That's one of the ones really? I really want to know. I don't know what my wand is. Really? Um, that'll be my project. I'll, I'll figure that out the next time. <laughs> yeah. So what would your, what's your favorite class? What would your favorite class be at Hogwarts? Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so hard. Part of me wants to say yeah. defense against the dark arts, but like as someone who plays Lily, that's probably not the best answer. Oh! Um, <laughs> uh, no, definitely. I mean, like, care of magical creatures absolutely oh, like yes. Hagrid as my professor all the way I mean like that'd be great um yes. so I feel like one of those two they're very opposite ends of the spectrum as you can yeah, tell like bit, I have yeah. a very wide range um but I would say yeah maybe those two um like then maybe you know herbology is cool too I'm trying to have more of a green thumb and get into plants and all that type are of you, stuff are so, you are you good with uh, plants can you keep them alive I'm, I'm okay. I'm learning. I'm learning because I now have I now have balconies which I'm planning on putting gardens on. And my my peace lily just bloomed for the second time, which is a really big win. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm I'm learning slowly. My brother has a, a better. <laughs> my brother's the green thumb, but I'm learning. It sounds like that sounds like my sister. I always joke that I'm ashamed to Hufflepuff house because I can't grow anything. I can't grow anything. <laughs> so what do you think you would do for extracurriculars? at Hogwarts like would you um, would you play Quidditch should you be I in the frog love, choir I would love to say I'd play Quidditch not that I'd be great at it because any type of athletic sport that involves a ball mm-hmm. is disastrous for me <laughs> but I would love to say that I'd I'd be good at Quidditch <laughs> yeah. so that would probably be the thing that I'd try out for and then they'd be like oh she's having a great time but we're just gonna we're just gonna gonna not (laughs) you'd be the you'd be the reserve player you'd be the oh i would would be the reserve on the bench yeah that you know when all else fails we send ellie in just to see if there's any hope left (laughs) um but yeah i'd I'd love to say that i play quidditch well that's brave of you because i would not want to be on a skinny little broom like flying above the clouds with balls flying at me like bludgers that that's the only scary thing yeah yeah thank you i'm getting knocked into (laughs) one yeah no thanks but i'd love to i'd love to say that that that's what i'd do yeah that would be so cool so what would you have at like a hogwarts at a hogwarts style feast what what would be some foods you'd have because i know you love cooking and baking yeah so much i love cooking so much um I don't know why trifle just came into my head. I'd love to have a trifle. Um, I'd love to have a trifle. I'd love to have, I mean, like I'm from England. So an English roast dinner, some roasted potatoes, Mm -hmm. you know, with some mint peas. Oh, that sounds great too. Yeah. Um, Obviously I'm vegan now. So everything is a little bit different Mm -hmm. in terms of the the meat side of things. Um, but yeah, I'd love I'd love to have some roasted potatoes. That sounds great, and a trifle, mm-hmm. and and maybe a cheesecake or something like that. If if Hogwarts does raw vegan cheesecakes, I'm all in. Oh right, <laughs> oh they're yeah. so good. Do you like them they with did. cashew, or do you make them with tofu? I haven't tried make. I mean, I've made one with tofu from a recipe before, but um, I've only ever like made my own with cashews, and so far mm. so good. Um, yeah, but tofu is next on the list. I want to try a baked tofu one. Um, that will be a challenge, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like the cashew ones too. I'm, I'm more of the the nut the side of that. Great. Yeah, because yeah. the they're so creamy. Great. They're so Thank creamy. Oh, oh, I love. Last that. time I made one, I was like, "Wow, this is great!" <laughs> this is right, so cool. right. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely cashew. I think. <laughs> 
haven't, I'm a little nervous to try tofu by myself because it's a little yeah. bit more of a challenge. I feel like that too. I was going to make a pudding with tofu and then I like chickened out and I was like, oh, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I made, I made mousse recently, like a chocolate mousse with mm. alfalfa, um, which was oh, really great. Um, that stuff is great. That stuff is really cool to use, but I haven't yeah. quite perfected it yet. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. You can use it in cakes too. And like for meringues, which is, yeah, which is very exactly. cool. Yeah. There are so many things to use. You don't need oh, that I know. <laughs> no, not at all. So, yeah. what was what would be your favorite candy from Honey Dukes? Hard um, one. Uh, <laughs> that's so hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whenever I would go to Universal or the Warner Brothers, I would always get chocolate frogs or the peppermint mm. chocolate frogs. The little ones in the little oh. blue boxes, the peppermint chocolate frogs. Yeah, all little the toads. Way. So they're doing, yeah, peppermint toads, you're right, the peppermint toads. Um, so vegan ones are those, hands down, that's me. Like, that's that's I awesome. um, Bertie Bots make me nervous because I've had bad yeah. experiences with those. Yeah. Um, so those, not as much. I am not so much into like sweets and candies. Mm. I, I do love sweets every once in a while, but I'm much bigger. I'm a much bigger chocolate person. Um, mm, same. So same. A vegan chocolate frog. You have my heart. Like, we have <laughs> we have a recipe for them on our blog. I know. I see we it. do. Yes. Yeah. I saw and it we, and I was like, okay, that's yeah, gonna be made pretty soon. Yeah. And we actually have a partnership coming up that we did with our fundraiser with Trubo Treats. They're gonna be making little chocolate salamanders Hi. for us. Oh my gosh, yeah. I can't wait. I saw that. I know. Amazing. I know. It's going to be so good. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm a big chocolate girl. That's Same me. here. It's just so good. It's so good. I want more yeah. caramel chocolate vegan options. That's what I really want more of. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm a big caramel person. I love that. Yeah, I agree with that. I also like orange flavored things. Like in the UK, you get mm. Terry's chocolate orange and, mm. and obviously they're not vegan. So I'm like uh. determined to make one of those for myself like <laughs> get oh, some chocolate cool. add some orange oil boom yeah. so speaking um, of that I can segue into what I was going to ask you so who are some of your favorite vegan bloggers or chefs cookbooks um, any of that stuff so I love little blog of vegan and she mainly <gasps> makes <laughs> That really scared me. I don't know if you saw that scared me. Um, I heard that, yeah. That's okay. Um, Little Blogger Vegan, she makes a lot of desserts. I just made for Mother's Day one of her chocolate sheet cakes, and it was amazing. So Little Blogger Vegan, I love it. It's great. Um, so I'd say that's my number one, especially for desserts. Most of my savory things that I make, I just kind of create recipes myself and just mm -hmm. roll with it. Um, I follow a lot of instagram accounts of a bunch of vegan people that are great um i follow two uh i guess they're kind of bodybuilders um and then oh vegan. okay cool nimai i don't know if you know nimai delgado he was a professional bodybuilder yeah. and his girlfriend bianca um and they are so cool like they're so inspirational and they have a podcast um and 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 it's not so much of a blog but that those are people that i look at you know, and I'm like, you're really cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but if I'm saying like blogs with food, um, definitely little blogger vegan. And then Helena Barlow has um, a blog, which is great. Oh, yeah. uh, and so I've been on hers as well. Uh, so yeah, I'd say those two. Mainly I just yeah. kind of experiment and figure it out as I go. <laughs> do, you, do you have any plans to make your own food blog? You know, I've been toying with the idea a lot recently. Um, yeah, a lot. I now have like a dedicated notebook to all of my recipes. Oh, I love um, that. I love that. And so I'm really, I'm really seriously considering doing it. I just, I'm like, I need to get halfway through this book of recipes full, full, and then I'll, then I'll sit down and probably do it. Um, but I just, I love cooking. I love experimenting. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I'm someone that's on the go a lot. So sometimes I make things that are really quick and easy. And when I first went vegan, I really struggled making things on the go um mm -hmm. because you know like i have to press my tofu for 20 30 minutes before mm -hmm. and all of that type of stuff and and it was hard for me to find um 
just meals to eat where I need to whip them together in, in mm-hmm. you know, minutes or so. Um, and so that I feel like is could be a hesitation with people who want to go vegan or mm-hmm. want to try it is just convenient meals um, yeah. that aren't on a big budget. You know, I'm still pretty young. I still have a pretty tight budget when it comes to food. Um, so yeah. I feel like that's one of the reasons I'd want to do it. Um, it's just to kind of be like, hey, I've only been vegan for a year and I'm still figuring it out. But like, here yeah, you go. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, um, make it more accessible and personal and yeah, not not as daunting. Yeah, not as daunting. And there's some great meat substitutes out there. Like, mm-hmm. I am pretty, um, or not organic, I'm pretty healthy, I'm pretty clean about the way I eat. So tofu and tempeh and um, nuts, legumes, like I get most of my protein from there. But there are also some really great meat substitutes that you can go to that I have fallen in love with recently when it's convenient to make a meal. Um, so yes, I am thinking about doing a vlog. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I'll definitely I let that. you know. Yes, 100%. That would be so cool. Mm-hmm. So I'll shift over to animals a little bit and activism Please. and your advocacy. So do you have any favorite animal rescues or sanctuaries or nonprofits, shelters? Yeah, I do. Um, well, I've been, I was working with the Dexter Foundation, which is like a small um, animal rescue out here in California. Um, and my mom and I, when I was living at home, we would uh, foster dogs and then rehabilitate them and oh. adopt them out. Uh, yeah, and so we did that for quite a few years and rescued dogs. And, and I've even done it where I've just like gone to the shelter and picked up a dog and then Called the rescue and been like, I just picked up a dog. Like we're gonna adopt it out through, oh my through Dexter. Um, because sometimes I have, I have this habit of just going to the shelter, and it's just a bad. Like just don't go to a shelter unless you want to come back with an animal, Ellie. Like I don't yeah. know why I have yeah. one. Um, <laughs> and so that the Dexter Foundation, they're wonderful. Uh, mm-hmm. and have worked with the, them for, you know, I've worked with them for years, and my mom especially. Um, so they're pretty close to my heart. We rescued a dog, um, who came to us and who we were so close to keeping. I mean, really, really close to keeping. We loved her so much. And my grandparents in the UK fell in love with her at the FaceTime. So they shipped her back. So she's living with my grandparents in the UK and had my grandparents not kept her, we would have, but now she's in the family, um, which is really wonderful. So it's like very close to my heart. So that's one that I really love. Uh, I also love the Gentle Barn and Farm Sanctuary. Oh, yes. uh, I love those. I went to visit the Gentle Barn uh, here in California. Um, gosh, it must have been over a year ago now because of COVID. Um, and I just like, I just loved it. Like, I, I, I have a really big place in my heart for barnyard sanctuaries because I just like, I am a really big farm girl and someone who loves mm. the country and like a lover of horses. And so, I mean, those just really make me happy. And Long Hope's Donkey Shelter as well, who actually reached out to me on Instagram. Um, and I oh. really, I want to go and visit. Once COVID, once everyone's vaccinated a little bit more, once we have some more numbers, um, I would love to go and visit. So definitely, like, those are a couple of it that I really love. I love that. And I know you talked a little bit about signing up to do fostering for kittens. Oh, my gosh, But it I didn't did. happen, <laughs> though, right? No, it oh. didn't happen. I actually got an email Uh, No, I got a text message about a month ago because um, last year during quarantine, I put in an application and I was like, well, Mm -hmm. I'm home all the time. I'll foster some kittens. Uh, And they never reached out to me, which for the best reason, because they had so many people willing to foster that they just didn't have any more kittens, which was great. And that made me really happy. That's so good. Um, Oh my gosh. Yeah. That I was like, that's a good reason for me not to be Mm -hmm. called on. And then about a month ago, Mm -hmm. I got a text message saying, you know, are you still interested? And at this point, you know, I was moving and I had just switched jobs. And now I work um, three eight hour days, part time. Oh, uh, wow. And so eight hours is just a long time to have an animal by itself. So, uh, especially foster is not fair. So I just said, not at the moment. Um, Yeah. But in the future. I'm yeah, getting a cat. <laughs> oh, I know. I love that. I'm such a cat person, so that makes me so happy that more I've people are gonna. I've always not more of a dog person, but I grew up with dogs. I didn't grow up with cats. So um, my my mom is allergic to cats. My brother is mm-hmm. allergic to cats. So we always grew up with dogs. So now that mm-hmm. I'm older, I'm like, oh, I'd love to have a cat. Is there a black one or a ginger one? Oh, one yes. 
Black is especially good because they have some of the lowest adoption rates, like even now, which is so heartbreaking to I me. Don't, I yeah. think they even are black the most dogs. Beautiful. Black yeah. dogs too. There's a rescue here called Little Black Dog Rescue, which like specializes in black it's dogs. Really cute. Yeah, it's super <laughs> cute. They're yeah. wonderful. Do so have you done that. yeah, have you done any other work like locally with any rescues or organizations in LA? Because I don't really know much about the LA scene. I don't really know what you have there. Um not not recently within the last year. Like the Dexter Foundation was one that mm-hmm. I worked with primarily. And and through that I worked with San Bernardino shelter and Carson Animal Shelter and Harbor Animal mm-hmm. Shelter because that's where all of the dogs would come from and that's where we'd go and and um you know interact with the people that work there and everything. So uh, loosely, I've worked with those. Um, I wouldn't say I had worked like one on one with with anyone. Um, more just donating and, and mm-hmm. reaching out to people and and saying if there's any way I can help. And mm-hmm. and donating, you know, I, I one of the reasons why I like to talk about I think me being vegan and my love for animals and how I help and environmentally friendly things is because I. Um, you know, I'm really young and I'm on a pretty strict budget, mm-hmm. but that mm-hmm. doesn't mean that I can't help in some ways. Yeah. Um, you know, like you don't always have to donate money, but I can mm-hmm. go to a rescue and say, do you need a dog bed? And then go and get a dog bed or if yes. have some old toys that, oh my gosh, I love my dog, but she has so many toys that sometimes I'm, mm-hmm. you know, just things like that, things that you might not think of, old towels that you have that you're going to get rid of that a shelter or rescue might really mm-hmm. use. Um, so things like that, that ways that you can help that's not like a really big expense out of your budget. Um, and so, you know, that's the ways I've helped those without directly interacting, mm-hmm. just more like, is there any way I can help? Um, and then, you know, occasionally when I have a little bit more of a budget, I will donate money because they have my heart and I can't stop giving to animals. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And even just talking about them, like to your followers on social media and just, yeah, you know, giving them yeah exactly press press yeah yeah Yeah, that's great yeah a little bit more exactly yes and so what are some animals that you take action for the most would you say it's like domesticated animals like cats and dogs versus Um, more farmed animals i would say i mean at the moment or at least in my past years especially being Mm -hmm. vegetarian because i was vegetarian for Mm -hmm. four years before i went vegan Um, that's awesome and yeah, yeah, and it was yeah, a big transition so because I'm a celiac as well. And so I'm gluten free. Oh, so I okay. wanted to make sure I was just really mm-hmm. safe and make sure my body was getting everything it needed before I made that change. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And so I think up until, I would say the last year, uh, it was mainly domesticated animals, cats, dogs, you know, rescues and shelters and things like that. Um, I did do, gosh, I was trying to remember the name of it before we got on the Zoom. Oh, that's um, okay. I did do a, uh, it's not like a march, but it's cool, like the cube. So yeah, I, that's the first time I really started um, speaking out for, especially as I was starting to go vegan for factory farm mm-hmm. animals. Uh, and now that's something that I'm taking steps towards um, in terms mm-hmm. of, you know, knowing everything and getting mm-hmm. all the facts and speaking about it in the right way um, and using my resources exactly. around me. but. Up until yes, I'd yeah. say, yeah, the, the last few years I had been mainly domesticated because we mm-hmm. had dogs and I was living at home and so I would foster mm-hmm. and, and things like that. And I think that that is also such um, an accessible way for people to mm-hmm. help animals. Oh, yeah. By fostering or by donating um, or by helping out a local shelter, by volunteering for a day. Um, so, yeah, up until, up until I'd say definitely recently, um, now I'm – as I'm a vegan, like one of the main reasons why I went vegan is because I, I mean, I was vegetarian for four years and the thing that turned me vegetarian was cowspiracy. Um, I watched that and I was like, okay, so I'm going to need to make some big changes. And I'd Mm. always been an animal lover. Um, and if I hadn't gone then, I would have gone now by some point, you know, Mm -hmm. because I loved animals for so long that I couldn't, I mean, like, I can't be an, I can't be someone who loves animals this much and and still consume them on a day to day basis. Exactly, and when I yeah. when I reflected on that um, in 2019, uh, it's the same thing with dairy. And mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I, I had done this for meat, but I hadn't done it yet for dairy. And, and when I 
did further research when I was becoming more aware of what was going on in the dairy industry. I was like, I can't do one and not the other. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, more recently it's definitely, you know, I'm definitely trying to center my sites and, and my research around that, um, and, and pushing towards that and advocating for that and, and being an activist in that in, in the future, definitely. Oh yeah, and it's so accessible yeah. now to start speaking up and signing petitions and getting signing involved petitions. with the sanctuaries. Yeah, Definitely. and even like uh, local legislation, things like that. Yeah, people don't realize local legislation can really make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I have always had a love for barnyard animals. Like I said, I grew up in the mm, country. I like I'm a real, I'm a really big farm girl. Um, I just actually signed a petition in the UK. Um, literally yesterday because for driver safety with horses on the road. Oh, like, oh I was going to ask you about horses. Okay. Yeah. Continue. Um, with horses on the road, like people, I mean, are so unsafe when, when there's a horse on the road and it's so dangerous. Um, and so you can sign a petition. And the, the great thing in the UK is that if you get a hundred thousand signatures, they can bring it to parliament. And so oh, they bring wow. it up in front of parliament. And so like, in the UK, if you're in the UK, that's such an accessible way for you to make a difference is by signing petitions because it will go to Parliament if they get enough. If they get enough, so um, yeah, horses. Gosh, I love horses so much. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to have my own horse. Uh, I have one of my own horse for such a long time. Um, they're just expensive, <laughs> really expensive, um, and a lot of work and a big animal that I can't just keep in my home. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but those, I mean, those animals, I have, all, ever since I was young, I've loved horses. Um, and I've signed petitions out here, you know, but mm -hmm. wild horse slaughters and everything like that, that, that's that been going on, like, it infuriates me. And, and it's also because I have such a big place in my heart for horses. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'd say barnyard animals have always had my heart, but in terms of factory farmed activism, I'm definitely taking steps now um, towards that. Uh, whereas, you know, when I first went vegetarian, it was more fostering. Mm -hmm. and, like and it's all valuable, I, though. Any kind of action, yeah, any kind of action you take for animals, to my perspective, it's all valuable. Because yeah, I, I think you even said that once, like, cow is a dog, is a sheep, yeah, is a rabbit. They're all, they're they all deserve and, love. Yeah, they're yeah, all exactly. intelligent and sensitive exactly. and I sweet. Can't treat them in any other way. I can't. You know, exactly. Yeah. I, that's why I went vegetarian. I was like, you know, I love my dog at home, but what's on my plate, you know, is no different. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it's really hard to see. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Melanie Joy wrote an incredible book about that. I think it's called Why We Love Dogs, Eat Pigs and Wear Cows. I think it's called that. I always oh, forget the title of it. And there's like a 20th anniversary edition that just came out. It was either 10th or 20th anniversary edition that came out. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic. And it's all about that disconnect between our companion yeah. animals versus the farm animals that yeah. live out in the pastures. It's yeah. such a good book. And it goes into carnism, which is like kind of a debated oh. term now. It's it's like kind of even Melanie admits that it's a little outdated now, but it's, it's yeah. a really good read, really eye-opening. Yeah, that's interesting. I might check that out. Thank you. Yeah, it's really good. I can definitely send it to you again because I feel like I might have gotten the title wrong because I know there's another oh, yeah. one that's similar to that, but it's a little bit no, of a No, definitely book. send it over, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So I what are some of the read. issues about horses that mean a lot to you since you talked about horses a little bit? Because we're going to be doing a um, carriage, uh, horses that pull carriages kind yeah, of campaign in, soon. That's yeah. great. I, I went mm -hmm. to New York. Um, oh my gosh, I went to New York like three years ago now. Um, and and I was just like appalled and disgusted by the way mm -hmm. that these horses were treated yeah. in New York. Um, it's not, it's not fair, you know, like you, it just, it really, like it hurts my heart, honestly, seeing the way these horses are treated and, yeah. and, and, you know, they're being watched to the ground. Like as an animal, is yeah. a, is a working being in general, you don't, you, like you're not worked to the ground. It's not yeah. like someone goes to a nine to five job and, and works and stuff to the point of dehydration and exhaustion to the point where they're mm -hmm. passing out. Like that's not, that's not normal. And so you have absolutely no right to do that to another being, regardless of it's an animal or a human. And just in general, like why do you want a horse on a carriage in, 
in New York City. Just just stop, in my opinion. Like, yeah. um, it just, it's like, it's baffling to me. Um, it's it's not fair. And, and like I said, road safety in the UK um, with horses. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you're walking with a horse on the side of the road, the cars, I mean, you have to keep like two meters of distance. Oh, wow. Between, and, and it's so unsafe for the car and the horse and the person involved um, that it, it should be something what they're trying to do. Part of the petition is to get it put on the driver's test. Um, when you take oh, your driving so test, good. Um, it's to know horse safety. Oh, that's um, so good. Because, you know, people get injured. People die in both in cars and when you're walking next to the horse, on the horse, you know, whatever the person is doing, it just, so that's a big thing as well. Um, and they're trying to get lots of signatures on that, um, which I just signed the petition on and, and will be reposting to try and get more signatures about that. Um, oh, that's fantastic. I've been around horses all of my life. My sister um, has been around horses all of her life, and it's just something that I've been aware of. Um, horses, just like any animal, they get scared, they spook, mm-hmm. and you don't, you're not aware of that. And then out here in the US, I mean, like the horse slaughter, especially mm-hmm. during the Trump administration, oh. was like, like, got to the point where I had to come off social media a little bit um, and in terms of that because I, I was just like infuriated and I'm not an angry person um, mm. I was just infuriated by just why like what the pup what is the purpose for that yeah. like what is the there, there is absolutely no purpose they are not they're not in your way at all they are living, mm-hmm. breathing beings that are out in their environment, in their own home and habitat, not affecting anyone. Mm-hmm. It was just like that, that infuriated me a lot. And, and yeah, and horses, like I said, they just have, they hold such a big place in my heart that anything I can do to create awareness, because I mean, that they're, they're an animal that, um has been used in day-to-day life for Mm -hmm. years and years and years and years and years as a form of travel as um as for so many reasons you know um and and it's so there are so many issues that come along with that type of animal whether that's like wild Mm -hmm. horses being slaughtered or or road safety or you know like there's so many things that go along with that that i just like to bring attention to those and, and I love that. Like I love that you're doing that. That's so <laughs> yeah. good. Because I feel like I was going to say, because that, that struck my attention when you said that, because I feel like horses just don't have as much advocacy. Yeah. Like you hear stuff about chickens, you hear stuff about cows, cats, dogs, yeah. but horses, it's, it's they're extremely it, underserved, maybe, kind of, yeah, by they animal are. activism. I think they're just, they're, I mean, they use, like, horse riding is such a big sport. Um, mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and it, you know, like they're, they use more frequently. And I think they're seen as a, as more of a domesticated pet for a lot of people because of, of horse riding and, and things like that, which in some ways is a good thing because they might be being cared for a little bit better than the other animals. But at the same time, there are still issues that go alongside, but that go alongside that, you know, and, mm-hmm. um, and if, you know, if you're going to be a horse rider, if you're going to be someone who has that animal a part of your life in that way, you need to know how to serve that animal in the best way possible yes. so that you're advocating for them, not just using them in a sport, if that makes sense. And and for the majority Absolutely. of the people that are in my life with who have horses or who ride horses are 100% that way, um, which is really positive for me to be around, um, you know, and, and I think that it, it's, because horses, you know, people have them like a lot as pets, you know, they mm-hmm. keep them in the backyard or, you know, they ride them on the weekends and that's great, but they're still an, a living and breathing animal that needs just as much advocacy as the factory farmed ones because there are just as many issues. Exactly. Opinion. Exactly. A hundred percent. So a little while ago, you mentioned living sustainably and environmentally friendly. So what are the some of the ways that you do that? And how would you suggest other people who are curious about exploring more living in ways that are more sustainable and yeah. kinder to the planet and to the animals. Definitely. Um, I mean, I think obviously being vegan is a really big change mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and definitely helps. 
Um, I think like I have in, recently over the last few weeks made myself really aware of the fact that there are some more steps I could be taking forward um, in terms of living a more eco-friendly life. Um, and you know, it's not as easy when you're on a really tight budget, but there are ways you can mm-hmm. make it work. Um, and you know, recently I invested in some glass Tupperware instead of plastic, albeit the Ikea kind, Dang, <laughs> not the Pyrex right. kind. It still counts, it counts. It still counts and you can mm-hmm. still, you can still do it on a budget. Mm-hmm. And I, I mm-hmm. um, and glass Tupperware is so much better than plastic Tupperware. Mm-hmm. Um, and alongside that, I, for the longest time have been wanting to get uh, reusable compostable uh, sandwich bags. And I just got oh. like literally last week, I got some compost, compostable, I don't know how the Americans say it, um, sandwich bags um, yeah. that I can throw in the compost when I'm done, which is great because um, I don't like to use plastic. I'm like really trying to limit mm-hmm. how much plastic mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. use. Like I have an electric toothbrush so that I don't have to worry about throwing more plastic into the environment. And then when I do have one that I travel with, it's a bamboo. Oh, so yeah, those are good. Like that, that you can that you can use that's not really gonna uh, hurt your wallet at all. Um, and like in little things, like I put a cap on how long I'm showering for, mm-hmm. um, which is which is good. Or you just turn the shower off and the shower on when you're conditioning your hair or shaving your legs mm-hmm. or whatever you need to do. Um, so that's good. And also, and this is a little TMI, but I'm pretty open, is like um, like sustainable menstrual products. And, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, totally normal. And that's a it. really, mm-hmm. yeah, that's a really good thing, you know. And yeah. I know, like, there are a lot of restrictions and everybody's body is different. But you mm-hmm. can even get organic, eco-friendly tampons and you can get uh, menstrual cups that can be yeah. really good. Um, yeah. and, and oftentimes you'll find that they'll actually save you money in the long run because mm-hmm. you can use a menstrual cup for months, years versus a tampon once. And so if you're paying like $11 for a box of tampons versus a menstrual cup that you can reuse for months and months and months, that's going to mm-hmm. cost you 30 bucks, like you're saving yourself so much money in the long run. Yeah. Um, so that's another way that I think, and obviously water bottles, like I don't use plastic. I, I got one of these that I use every day and I yeah. uh, like reusable water bottles. Like that's yeah. a really easy way for you to save plastic. Um, and just simple things like walking to the store instead of driving, if it's only a five, 10 minute walk, even if it's mm-hmm. a 15 minute walk, like it's good to get your body moving. <laughs> um, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So little things like that, that, that are not um, a really big expense, but you know, more recently I've been considering um, not using paper towels at all and just getting mm. some really um, cheap, like, dish rags. Mm-hmm. Um, dish, you know, yeah. 10 or 20 of those and, and buying them. You know, you can go to TJ Maxx or Ross and yeah. Marshalls and get them really cheap. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Wash them after I use them, off the spills and things like that, or throw them in the laundry because um, it's actually going to save me more money if I just throw it in with my load of laundry than if I buy mm-hmm. however many paper, rolls of paper towels. Um, yeah and I'm working on a compost I'm working on like getting, oh, I love that actually getting a compost but I'm like what do I do with the compost when I have it so that's why I need to get my garden set up so I have somewhere to put it yeah um but yeah like that's that's the next big step is is composting um my food waste little steps like that that you know people can take that will uh influence you know their day-to-day life and their carbon footprint in a really good way that's not gonna like break your bank. I'm realizing I'm a pretty big advocate for like um, making things accessible and doing things on a budget. Um, Because a lot of times when, at least when I was in my teenage years, I found that going vegan or vegetarian or being eco-friendly and organic and all of that stuff was really, really expensive. Um, It it can be. Uh A lot of the times it can be, um, Mm -hmm. which I think puts a lot of people off from making those changes because Mm -hmm. a lot of people might not have it in their budget or don't always want to spend a little bit of extra money. Um, And especially for young people like myself, that you can still make those changes in a positive way that's not going to break your bank, that are just little ways. And, you know, step by step, you know, every every time you take a little step forward, you're making a little bit more of a difference. Like you don't have to take a huge leap to feel like you're doing something. Yeah, um, I love that. I love that. We should do so. like a, we could do something like that, like a little feature on that little article on that vegan budget living yeah. with Ellie. Absolutely. I would absolutely love to do that. Yeah, definitely. 
because that is, I feel like that's a big thing because I know before I went vegan as well was I thought it was difficult. I thought it was too hard. Where am I going to find these ingredients? How am I going to afford them? Because I was 21 when I went vegan. And I was 20, yeah. And then when I realized it's just how accessible it could be with beans and grains and that you don't need to buy all those fancy ingredients. And like even organic, sometimes it's not always affordable. So if you can't always buy organic. organic. (laughs) Exactly. That's Um, the thing. It's not always affordable. But as long as you're buying produce that, you know. Yeah. And it's also, you know, I think that I realized that it wasn't as expensive because when I was buying meat and dairy products, like oh, that's expensive. more. Oh, yeah, like, you're right. Actually, it they're is a lot expensive, more. and and I, you know, and and I'm buying tofu that is like a dollar fifty for a pack yeah. of tofu, mm-hmm. which is great, you know. And, and yeah. I also, I'm a real adult now, and I just got a Costco membership, which is ah. crazy. Um, <laughs> and so you can buy things in bulk and often save mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a lot of money. Um, and you can freeze tofu. You can freeze a lot of your fruits and veggies and use them for other things like smoothies so that your food doesn't go bad. Um, yeah. like there are a lot of ways to save your food in, when you're buying in bulk um, so that you get the most out of it. Uh, but yeah, like living on a budget's hard, uh, but it can be done in an easy way if you're just, and I also think you have to be creative with what you cook. Um, mm-hmm. Creative with what you cook, then it A, becomes way more exciting uh, and B, will often save you money. Exactly. Yeah. Like I just recently found a way to make a different pesto, which I'm very excited about. So I normally would make it with cashews, but I decided to try it with pumpkin seeds and it's just as good. Oh, great. Yeah. Me too. And I was like, you know what, let me try something a little different. Let me save my cashews and try it with pumpkin. And it's so good. Yeah. That's the only thing I have realized being vegan that are really expensive is raw cashews. Mm-hmm. At mm-hmm. least in mm-hmm. California. They are here oh too gosh. as well. Mm-hmm. I wanted it, to make a cheesecake and I spent twenty dollars on oh, I believe it just to make a cheesecake. I, I like, believe it. Ugh. Hashtag cheesecake problems. Oh yeah. I love cheesecake. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> so we can ask I can ask you some things about your lifestyle, vegan lifestyle, <laughs> and your future plans. So what are some things that inspire you as an animal advocate and as a vegan? So we've talked about a lot, but... A lot of people on Instagram that are really wonderfully inspiring. But when I think about like why I went vegan and why I eat the way I do and I live the way I do is because of the animals. Mm. And, and, um, and they are the thing that like, you know... There are times, especially when you first go vegan, where I'm like, God, like, excuse my language, but like, fuck, this is really hard. No, that's and sometimes totally <laughs> it seems easier to just go back to the way you were doing it previously. Um, and you have those moments and that's a completely normal thing. And I'm going to like allow that to be normalized, to have a moment yes. where you're like, yeah, this sucks. And I'm Even really struggling. Out. Yeah, eating, eating out. out. Like, yeah. I'm lucky I live in LA because mm-hmm. it's like the thing that everyone loves to do out here. I which love is great. that. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's hard. And, and I'm a celiac as well. Um, mm-hmm. And I love animals mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. all of my heart. Mm-hmm. And it was really difficult. Um, yeah, a lot of people now are gluten free and vegan. And, and I have to be I really too. careful. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to be really careful about, about what I eat, especially with my celiacs. Like, I have to be like really on top of it. And so, you know, when I would have those moments of like, gosh, this is so hard. Like it's, I, when it comes down to it, it was like, no, there's no way I'm going back. Like the animals is why I like, exactly. they are why yeah. I do this. They're why I live the way I do is to advocate for them and to show other people that like they deserve as much love as mm-hmm. your dog or your cat at home does. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's truthfully the reason why I do it. That's like my inspiration behind my diet and the way I live and the love I have for animals is because they show me a different kind of love and what a different kind of compassion looks like. Um, and I'm going to honor that in every way I can. I love that. <laughs> I love that so, so much. Yeah. 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 So what were some of the myths about veganism that have been dispelled you for you since you've gone vegan? Yeah, what is, is that a garbage truck? Is it? Oh my God, that's so loud. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna take you guys inside because <laughs> we've had enough garbage trucks for today. Um, How did I know that? How did I know that was oh a garbage my gosh. truck? 
they're so obnoxiously loud. That's crazy. I swear, every day it's garbage day here. Like, I live on a street of apartments. And so every day there's different garbage. There's different people who are gardening, like, every day. So I hear gardeners every single day. Um, sorry, what was the question? Oh, sorry. It's okay. So are there any myths about veganism that you've dispelled? I should have, like, waved a wand since um, you've gone vegan. vegan. <laughs> that vegan food is gross. Yeah, that's um, such a good one. That's because, such a good one. Or that, that, or that vegan food can't be as good as, as regular food. Right. And, and, it's, it, and it, like, com completely depends on, like, what you like to eat and all of that stuff. And mm -hmm. And a lot of people that eat meat, you know, I have family members, I have people in my personal life that still eat meat that struggle because it doesn't taste like meat. Um, mm -hmm. And that I get, like, that was my biggest struggle when I went vegetarian, but now I've been without meat for so long that it doesn't really mm -hmm. bother me. And like a Beyond Sausage is the greatest thing in the world. I went vegetarian in 2016. And so Beyond was like picking up the pace then and, and then starting to come out with products pretty shortly after. So it didn't feel too weird for me having a meat substitute in that way. Uh, some people don't like it, which is completely understandable, but also mm -hmm. they're expensive. So you, mm -hmm. I mean, like using those as a day-to-day -day staple, I don't recommend. Um, but I think that, yeah, people telling me that vegan food isn't good or, or can't be good, and it, that's a complete lie. I make the best cheesecake. <laughs> I believe it. I um, want to try your cheesecake. Oh, uh, I want to try it so bad. But it's just like if you if you are willing to experiment with your food and, and get creative, or even if you buy a, a vegan cookbook, like just mm -hmm. to get you started so you know what flavors work and how to cook. Because, yeah. oh, my gosh, when I first started cooking tofu, it was the most disgusting thing I've oh, ever right? seen in my life. Right? You need to I learn how to be a, a tofu wizard. Like you need I to have learn. no idea how to cook it. Now I'm great and I know how to do it, but like that's hard. And so it's just about kind of uh, taking a moment to like invest in it. Um, and but trial yeah, that's and the error. biggest yeah. trial yeah. and error. So that's the biggest thing that was debunked when I, and going out to eat in vegan restaurants, some places out here are incredible, oh. especially in LA. I, like, I believe it. Go to a vegan restaurant. That will change your mind. <laughs> All right. Um, I always tell people that. There are some really great ones here in Connecticut as well. And I, I've taken people there who normally eat meat and they're like, wow, I prefer this versus my other food. And it just yeah. makes me so happy to hear that. Yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> yeah. And definitely with the baking, that drives me crazy too. When people are like, it's dry or it's tasteless or... I want the real cake. That drives me insane. I'm like, oh, so this yeah. cake's imaginary because it's vegan. It's yeah. not real. Like, Yeah, I disagree with that. Oh, <laughs> I hate that. Um, that drives me insane. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So funny. So I'm glad that you said yeah. that. Do you have any favorite, like, cookbooks that you go back to? Um, Not really. I just kind of did it by myself. Um, and I mean, like, occasionally I would look up like the best ways to cook tofu or tempeh and like mm -hmm. how long you should press it for and things like that. Um, I've recently got more into freezing and thawing my tofu, um, mm. which is great because it helps have more of like a spongy texture. So you can like then put it in some like batter it a little bit and then put it in the oven and they're like little baked nuggets. It's really yeah. Nice. What you can um, also do is you can also um, like cube it and like toss it in a little bit of cornstarch or tapioca starch and just plain bake it in the oven and it gets like crispy. Yeah. And it's really yummy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do, I do mm -hmm, pretty much mm -hmm. exactly that when I um, make mm. teriyaki. Um, so yeah, I think that I, I never, I mean, like I said, little blogger vegan has been really helpful for desserts because um, when I went vegetarian, a lot of times, like it would just be eggs that I would use. And especially in desserts, like eggs were my main source of protein while I was vegetarian. Mm, um, I feel like that's a common. Yeah. I feel like that's really common. Yeah. Especially gluten-free because a lot of meat substitutes that my family were trying had wheat in them, especially like seitan. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, but Definitely. eggs like in desserts, a lot of gluten-free desserts. Um, right. have eggs have eggs in them so that was like a big mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. a, a little bit of a struggle and so little blogger vegan like check out her desserts they look incredible I definitely will I mean they're amazing and so she's been helpful um 
just like looking at her recipes and how she does it and all that type of stuff the stuff she makes is so good <laughs> um so would highly recommend um yeah. but yeah you should look at feasting on fruit she is incredible her name's natalie mm -hmm. her name's natalie and she does a lot of like like what you do too like refined sugar free she uses like dates a lot yeah. and a lot of the stuff so good and another yeah. one that i really love is beaming baker she's really good i was like so excited mm -hmm. to tell you but some of my favorite people too i like I love cooking ella and baking. vegan as well i don't know if yeah. you know ella vegan ella vegan's I, yes yes i do i do well, i don't know great. her I'm, but i know the, the blog yeah it's yeah really good. ella and vegan's great i've made her banana bread before it's incredible <sighs> one of my um, favorites though is isa chandra moskovitz she has such amazing recipes she's actually mm -hmm. what led me to take that jump to go vegan because i took it out i taken out her her book vegan with a vengeance from my library right before i turned 21 and i read through it cover oh. to cover and i was like i could do this i could do this this is so easy because she has budget-friendly yeah. recipes and tells yeah. you all the tips and the techniques and she's just such a badass she's so cool she's very like yeah, punk great. rock and yeah she's oh, so, cool. so cool yeah she yeah. makes it cool she makes it cool I will say, like out here in LA, there are some vegans who have ruined it for me. Who because oh, vegans no. have a bad name out here in LA, like, oh, you're mm -hmm. vegan, you're gonna be the obnoxious person. You're gonna be pretentious. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be pretentious. Like, you're gonna tell me how I'm eating dead animals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When actually, I am like the complete opposite. I am the most accepting, generous, understanding person, and I wasn't vegetarian or vegan i wasn't vegan for 20 years and and i wasn't vegetarian for 16 years you know i still ate meat mm -hmm. and i'm not going to judge anyone for that choice i love that i don't know I what's that. going on in anyone's life but if people like most of the time people are willing to have a conversation with me about it and i will mm -hmm. tackle mm -hmm. why i'm vegan and vegetarian in a really civil way and then we end up having a great discussion about it and and it's a really nice conversation versus like one of us or the other you know like them preaching about meat and me pointing about fingers being, like, it's just, yeah. Yeah, what's the point in pointing fingers like you then you know you're just as bad as the other side if you're holding mm -hmm. judgment and and being rude and that's like not who i am in the slightest um exactly and i think that part of the vegan community is is love and compassion and um mm -hmm. because somebody else's choices are different it doesn't mean you can't educate them but like do it with kindness exactly um, a yeah. big part of, of the way i go about it <laughs> yeah. yeah so i was gonna ask so since we're almost done i'm gonna like wrap it up because you've given us so much time mm -hmm. and i appreciate it so much you've been yeah, so cool. wonderful so do you have any encouraging words or advice for aspiring vegans or the vegetarian community or the people who are curious about more of a plant-based lifestyle um i would say just try it um, and if you're nervous to try it, do a little bit of research. Like if there are steps that you're going to be taking moving forward, you know, try different restaurants or buy a meat substitute. If you, even if you're still eating meat, buy a meat substitute and try cooking it with some meals, just try it. Mm -hmm. Trial and error. Like you don't, I didn't go cold Turkey, um, for <laughs> vegan or vegetarian, um, no, I don't think I, I in my, in the year of 2019, uh, was my transitioning year. I used it as I used the whole year to transition from vegetarian to vegan. And mm -hmm. I would do like three months pretty much vegan. And then I would kind of figure out where I was deficient in some of my vitamins or where my body needed a little bit more fuel. Um, mm -hmm. so it took me a year to like fully get the hang of going vegan after four years of already being vegetarian. So mm -hmm. don't feel like you have to put pressure on yourself if this is something that you're interested in. You know, just mm -hmm. like anything else, do a little bit of research, trial and error, see what works for you, see what doesn't. Um, and 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 don't um, give don't give up because one thing didn't work. Um, you know, if you cook tofu once and it is disgustingly shitty, a.k.a. what happened to me, don't give up because it didn't yeah. go well the first time, um, I guess is, is what I'd say um and also be gentle on yourself like if this oh, is something yeah. you're considering doing like that's a really wonderful thing so be gentle with yourself and just consider the fact that you're making a wonderful decision and allow time for that don't feel like you have to put pressure on it um and reach out 
reach out to like look at vegan blogs reach out to people on social mm-hmm. media because i guarantee you some of them would be more than willing to help um i when i was going vegan i reached out to ivana uh, and she was great and she was like yeah here are a bunch of resources here are a bunch of ways that that can help you um so reach out to people you can always mm-hmm. send me a dm i'll respond to your dm if oh, you need I help going that. vegan <laughs> that's um, so sweet oh you're so sweet so, yeah just be gentle on yourself is what I yeah to that's such good advice I love that and yeah. here's last question do you have any exciting yeah. plans for the rest of this year or for 2022 um <laughs> gosh <laughs> I no I know it's head. totally it's um, no pressure no in terms pressure. of in terms of veganism or just my life anything in just your your life veganism anything um, setting up your little rescue making your blog yeah. <laughs> Well, that's that's in the works. I think the blog is the blog is becoming more and more of a reality. Uh, it's just the logistical side of it uh, of making sure that I have enough recipes behind me to get mm-hmm. started, mm-hmm. so I'm not stressed each week. Um, oh yeah. Out. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that's definitely in the works. Uh, I think if I'm going to do something like that, it will be maybe somewhere around my 22nd birthday in September. So we'll see. Uh, oh. So that that is um that is being talked about uh i have a short film that i shot last year that is going to be running the festival circuit um hopefully towards the end of this year that we're wrapping up uh which is something that i am it has nothing to do with veganism but Mm. has is a pretty heavy subject and uh and it's something that i'm really passionate about um and have just taken a lot of time and put a lot of love into um that will be available for people to see soon so there's that um and other than that just getting through the rest of this pandemic and coming out mm-hmm. on the other side <laughs> um love that that's the goal uh is just staying happy and healthy and living life as it comes um mm-hmm. that's what i'm trying to do so yeah well that's wonderful <laughs> i love that yeah. have well, a yeah. lovely weekend it's friday thank you you Friday. too i know all good. Uh, I'm gonna sleep in tomorrow. It's gonna be great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will hopefully hear from you soon. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.